morning, crypto. Good morning, warriors. Hello and welcome back to another episode of your favorite crypto news channel, Good Morning Crypto, where we bring you the most relevant and impactful crypto-related topics from the top crypto research team in the world. I'm your host, Abs, joined by several members of our 3T family this morning. We've got the godfather, also known as Mr. Johnny Crypto, Gonzo, the Crypto Goliath, and Andrew Cashflow, also known as the Cashflow King. Today on Good Morning Crypto, we will be discussing how hundreds of millions have entered the crypto sphere as the world becomes increasingly digital. We show our listeners what countries are leading in global adoption. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse is under fire this week after being accused of paying a law firm to target Ripple competitors. Are these accusations accurate or more FUD from crypto Twitter? The SEC has its eyes on the latest digital security, as Grayscale reports that XLM may be a security based on the facts that exist today. Mt. Gox creditors dispel the rumors about a Bitcoin dump coming from the exchange, as renowned lawyer John Deaton explains how Coinbase delisting XRP after the lawsuit could have massive implications from the SEC going forward. Our show is available on your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. For those of you listening via podcast, our show is live on YouTube, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern at the 3T Warrior Academy channel. So we have 113 live listeners with us already on this beautiful Monday morning. And we're going to dive into the amazing news that you are here for. But Johnny Crypto, why don't you tell us a little bit about your lake house first? Uh, mute button, Johnny. Mute button. I don't really think anybody cares about that. But first of all, good morning to all the Warrior Maniacs out there today. Thank you for showing up every day like true warriors. And good morning to all my brothers there, Gonzo and Andrew. Always great to see you. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to dive into the exciting uh, lot of news we got this weekend. I was looking forward to it. Really excited for it, Gonzo. We're kicking it right to you next, my friend. Why don't you show them the bull run gear and what's on your mind? I got the Diamond Hand shirt on today. But uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here with us. One. Right? Diamond Hands all the way. Um, yeah, man, it was a great weekend. Truly blessed. I uh, got to spend some time with uh, Shelly. We had like a date night on Saturday, so that was cool. And I got some research done. So yeah, I, it's a big week for us. And we have a big uh, guest coming on Wednesday, BitBoy Crypto. So that's going to be an awesome show. So just looking forward to a great week. Shout out to BitBoy Crypto. I was watching a very interesting video this weekend of him talking about where we are in the four-year cycle and it looks like we got one more leg down before we bottom out. But Andrew Cashflow, I want to kick it to you on this morning. I know it's 5 p.m. in the Netherlands, so good afternoon. And how are you feeling today? Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon for the for the, the viewers in in the Netherlands. 5 p.m. here was an, uh, was a great weekend last weekend. I love freedom, so we went uh, last weekend. We went to Dusseldorf in uh, in Germany. We went to a fair for mobile homes, and it was amazing what they currently sell in in mobile homes and was huge so uh, we are pretty much inspired for uh, for much more freedom and of course looking forward to uh, to do the show again awesome and we're going to get this thing started the same way we always do by showing you our good morning crypto twitter account at 3tgm crypto on twitter you get access to every member of our team but first we're going to dive into what's going on in the market today the bitcoin fear and greed index is back in extreme fear this morning after that bearish price action we had this weekend we're sitting at a 24 and the market actually dipped below $1 trillion. We are sitting at $974 billion in total market cap. Bitcoin is 39% dominance. Ethereum is 19%. Bitcoin is at $20,100 this morning. Ethereum is $1,500. XRP is $0.33. Cents. We've got Cardano at $0.44. Cents. Solana, $31. Kronos, $11. Algorand is $0.29. Cents. Hedera is $0.6.5. Cents. And we've got Quant barely at three digits right now, sitting at $100 flat. Johnny Crypto, we got tons of news for today, but I want to give our listeners a brief market update. What is Johnny Crypto keeping an eye on? Well, you know, as I told you guys in the past, um, I thought we would bottom out in July. I thought we'd get a run through August and September. I no longer think we're getting a run in September. I think it's going to be August. I think that's all we're going to see. I think from here on out, personally, I think it's just going to be ugly. But, you know, I guess time will tell. I certainly think October and November will totally be ugly, and maybe December, January will start to rebound. So I think the ugliness, unfortunately, may, may have already started, but uh, we'll see. I think the only good news is, you know, we know the Mt. Gox. We talked about this the other day. We thought that that would really drop, you know, how low could Bitcoin go, and I think we saw that Bitcoin actually, you know, ha held up pretty well. What right? tested 19.5 or something like that and kind of held up. So interesting to see. However, I still think there's more pain coming. 
And I won't be surprised if we go down and retest 17.5 at some point this month or next month. And if we break that, then yes, we will be seeing lower. We will be seeing we will be seeing lower lows. Gonzo, I want to kick it to you because Ethereum took a massive hit this weekend. We were texting and you said $1,200 was a key level that you're watching. What do you feel about this bearish price action? Does it look like it's about to be a, a very bearish fall? Or are you getting ready for our next leg up? Yeah, well, you know, I, I just, I don't think that the, uh, you know, the market reacted well to the news of the Fed, you know, and how they're still hawkish. So I think we're going to get more of that. Um, we, you know, I have a trend line that that goes back to the all time high of Bitcoin that held. That's right. We stayed like at 19 something. Um, I, and to answer the question, though, do I think the bottom is in? Um, not yet. You know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm still leaning towards whether it's the four year cycles. Right. And, it, and if you take the, the having and you count all that, that, that happens in November or you're like us. And it's most esoteric where you believe in the eclipses. We have that eclipse coming up on um, if it's a solar eclipse. Right. We, it's always the lunar eclipses that are a little bit harder on the market, but the solar eclipse is on uh, October 25th, and then the lunar eclipse happens in that November 7th, 8th period. So um, I wouldn't be surprised, really, if we get a little bit of a rebound and we come up a little bit, not a lot. I don't know if Ethereum has enough to make it to 2000. If it does, uh, I don't see it going up much higher um, again, Bitcoin has to like get above 25 right now. We're not even barely above 20. So we'll see, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of a rally, but I'm still leaning towards the bottom is going to be in, um, in, in November, right? October, November is when and we get that true bottom is what. And I'm that would for. correspond perfectly with the four year cycle, right? Gonzo, typically yeah, we get our market exactly. bottom exactly 12 months after our market top. I want to kick it to Andrew Cashflow because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the market this morning. And many of the projects that we believe have real utility are taking a massive hit. What are some of the projects that you're watching and you feel are at a discount during this time? Actually, I'm not so much watching at the moment because I think a lot of people are bored at the moment of, of the crypto market. It's going down, down, down. The fun is down. Uh, the... So what, what do I see happening? The amount of phishing is going up dramatically. Normally, I get one phishing email per week. Now, the last week, I got seven or eight phishing emails from reminder from Ledger, and uh, your Ledger may be vulnerable, and uh, from Binance, just a few days left to complete your identity verification from Atomic Wallet, new updates, NFTs added, update your Atomic Wallet now. I want to say to everybody, watch the phishing emails and understand what you are doing never type your seed phrase into a whatever button always look if you click on a button in an email always look what are you clicking on what is the address behind the button because the the, the from message is absolutely fake and 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 so just a warning from my side a lot of people are bored at the crypto market so they are they're looking to find yeah to to rob you from your uh, from your crypto and that's, yeah, you know, be warned and be aware, aware and alert that these, these people are in there in the market. And if you don't trust it, check, check, double check, type, type addresses by hand and not click on a button, you know, and then you know for sure and get your two factor authentication in, get your secret phrases in, uh, uh, everything should be optimal, um, yeah, protected to protect yourself. So. That's what I was, uh, yeah, looking at a little bit. A little security lesson from Andrew Cashflow this morning. We got 167 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. We are going to dive into the SEC claiming that XLM is an unregistered security. But before we dive into that, I want to get a little bit of the market discussion. Gonzo, can I kick it to you here? As we're looking at the Bitcoin price chart, typically what happens after that 12-month regression is we go into a long-term consolidation where we'll trade sideways for anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Even if the market hasn't bottomed yet, we're going to go into a long-term consolidation. What are you preparing our listeners for? Because Andrew Cashflow said a lot of people are bored out there. These next 18 months may be even more boring. Yeah, just, you know, it, it's the people that stay, right, that don't get bored, that don't get emotional, and then just implement whatever their investment thesis is that end up doing well, right? When we look at back at the history of, of, of the crypto market as a new asset class, um, it's the people that don't get emotional. It's the people that get patient, right? These are the times that you dollar cost average. No one is saying, even though like we talk about is the bottom in or not, you know, this weekend was a great weekend, a dollar cost average. Like if you love Algorand, Algorand got down to 29 cents, right? 
Could it get lower if Bitcoin drops? Yeah, it can. But I'm going to continue to DCA as we go down. And then so just make sure that you know what kind of investor you are. Do the research now that you have time. And whether it's the ISO tokens, whether it's HBAR, Quant, you like some metaverse project, whatever that is, right? Make sure you just have a plan and that you're prepared. Um, and then you can just continue to dollar cost average as we go down, right? If you're more of the kind of investor where you're waiting for that kind of bottom and then to put in bigger chunks, then that's what you got to do. But understand that it's an educated guest, right? Uh, you know, don't, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, everyone starts calling 10 to 14 and we stop somewhere at like 14 too, right? Because the market always does what you least expect it, right? So I'm, I'm either expecting it not to go all the way down to 14 or to completely blow by that, right? And go sub 10 and freak everybody out. We'll see. You got to take it by levels. I mean, you yeah. guys are already kind of involved and you, and you watch the show. So we're going to be talking about it. But, you know, whatever, whatever your plan is, just make sure that you have a plan and that you're implementing that plan. And what gets the only thing I'm concerned with for retail investors is that if everyone's waiting for fourteen, ten thousand dollars before they get in, and then we go just above that range, well, retail just yep. missed out on the buying opportunity of a lifetime. And that's why we always talk about dollar cost averaging. Johnny Crypto, I want to dive into this tweet right here is UK household energy bills will rise by 80% starting this October. What does this tweet mean to you before we dive into our crypto news? <laughs> <laughs> it means inflation is here and it's gonna keep coming. It ain't gonna stop. Um, I think that's that's gonna you know what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a big hurt in the economy as a whole because obviously if people are spending more money to heat their homes. Well, obviously they're gonna be spending less money elsewhere, right? It's just it's just common sense. So you will expect well, there'll be less disposable income, and that means the that's why the Fed said. You know, we heard the, the story last week that there's going to be hurt. There's going to be pain in the market. There's going to be a soft market because that's what happens. You know, now, if you were smart, <laughs> you might invest in an oil or gas company or, you know, that area. Because obviously, if they're raising the prices, the reality is not all of that is inflation. That's all. A good chunk of that will probably be profits, even though they're going to tell you it's not. It will be. You, you watch. Next year, you'll see the gas and the oil companies made the most money ever. Watch. But um, so for me, yeah, that's the sad part is you're going to see people hurting. You're going to see job loss. It, it's going to get, it's going to be an ugly year. And we're actually going to dive into an article stating exactly that, Johnny. But first of all, we got 203 live listeners joining us on this Monday. Thank you for being here. You can be anywhere in the world and you are watching Good Morning Crypto. And we're going to show you exactly why you're tuning in. As Robert Kinasaki says, real estate, stocks, gold, silver, and Bitcoin markets are crashing. Millions are going to be wiped out in the process. Robert Kinasaki has been a historical bear, especially these last two years since the C19 crisis. And there's nothing new here. Robert Kinasaki is calling, stating that every market is crashing and the middle class will be wiped out due to high, higher oil inflation. All markets are crashing. That goes for real estate, stocks, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. The middle class is in the process of being wiped out, says Robert Kinasaki. He goes on to state that why this is the biggest stock market crash in history is still yet to come and how he's going to prepare. He actually advised into buying silver and not hedging into crypto assets, stating that crypto assets still have much further to fall. Last June, he stated he was waiting for the cryptocurrency market to test. This is actually a typo. It says 1100 It's supposed to say $11,000. So Robert Kinasaki is calling for an $11,000 Bitcoin. Johnny Crypto, are you waiting for those prices? You know... <clears throat> The reason why I sleep good at night, as I follow the rule that I've been telling you guys, is I make sure that when I invest in something that I always leave some cash on the side. And um, that's why I feel good, because I, if it happens, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to actually dollar cost average as we get down in those ranges. Anybody who's waiting for a specific number is really playing a fool's game. And that's just a game that I wouldn't play. I don't care. If I buy it at 14.5, 14.3, 14.2, .2, I don't care, right? As long as I'm buying it on the way down towards 12 or wherever the hell the bottom is, because I don't know where the bottom is. Gonzo don't know where the bottom is. You don't know where the bottom is. And nobody in this chat room, if they tell you they know where the, where the bottom is, they're lying to you. We don't know. So um, the only thing that makes me feel good is I wait, I hold, I see, I got the money sitting on the side. And that is the, that's the key. You feel good knowing like, hey, if it goes down, it's okay. I'll just pick up some more at cheaper prices and I'll sit and hold them till we get to 2023 20, or 24 or 25 when it's going to happen. So I think that's the problem is a lot of people go all in and that's a big investing. That's a rookie one-on-one mistake. I did it too early on. I put all my money in. I'm like, 
oh shit, we're going down. I got no more money. That's a position you never want to put yourself in. So I advise everybody, if you if you're getting in now and you're getting used to this, just because we're low, don't put it all in. We're not as low as we can go. Make sure you set 20 or 30 percent aside for even a, a rainier day. Especially with everyone talking about a black swan event that may be on the horizon. But Gonzo, I want to get some of your thoughts. Kinasaki also tweeted to his two million followers that among those who are about to get wiped out, adding that this is the time to get richer. It's not what's in your wallet. It's what's in your head. First change what's in your head, and then you're going to get richer. I know Andrew Cashflow is huge on this mindset first, but Gonzo, I want to kick it to you. What do you think about Andrew Cashflow's, I mean, sorry, what do you think about Robert Kinasaki stating it starts with your thoughts and then your reality will follow? Yeah, it's the same thing that we talk about, you know, with the Warrior Academy, right? The 3T Warrior Academy. It all starts about mindset, right? Not being emotional, having the right mindset and everything flows from that. Um, and so, you know, when he talks about like, you have to remember where he's coming from, right? He already has money. So he's trying to keep the wealth that he has. And I'm, I'm assuming because I'm not into precious metals. But if he's saying to get silver, I don't think it's for the price appreciation. I think it's to hold the value that he has. When we're talking about the kind of investors that I am, and I think most of us that are here are like the viewers and stuff, it's we're trying to get price appreciation, right? And that's why we're a little, at least that's for me, that's why I'm a little bit riskier and, and um, you know, I'm dollar cost averaging, even though I know it can go lower. But like, if you happen to make a mistake, right? And, and you go all in, let's say you go in at 18, 17, whatever that is. As long as you don't panic, right? If we go down further, right? You end up breaking that sub 10 and you don't panic and sell. You don't realize the loss, right? You're just at 17, 18, whatever that is. You just have to wait for the market to come back up. So at least do that. At least wait for the market to come back up if you're really that freaked out about it. And then you can get your money back or just be patient and wait. Just be patient. But what you can't do is like go all in. And then we get like a 40 to 50% correction and you freak out and you sell, right? Because then now you sell, you realize the loss, it's going to turn right back around and go back up where you were at. And then now you're kind of freaking out, right? And then now you're buying too high and things like that. So again, it all starts with your mindset and just being patient, right? Know, know what you're doing or know what you're getting into. Andrew Cashflow, we talk about how a black swan event has been on the horizon this entire year and Tether may be that event that everyone is very worried about. The Tether CTO pushes back on the audit timeline, saying it's still many months away. Tether has now pushed back their audit timeline for over five years. What are some of your thoughts on the Robert Kinosaki article and the fact that Tether may be the black swan event for the crypto market? If we are all saying that Tether is the black swan event, then it isn't. Then some, something else will come. You know, it is just, in a, in, in a, just a distraction maneuver. So, you know, nobody knows the black swan event because that is why it is called a black swan event because nobody knows it, you know, and it doesn't matter. And if it is tether, then it is tether. And if it is something else, it is something else, you know, just just to to to, to react on what, what Gonzo said, um, if you go all in, then you regret it uh, if, 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 if your coins go down. However, on the other side, if you don't go all in at this moment and you have still 50% of your money in cash and you fear that everything is going up, that is the same mental battle. So what you should, should do is yeah, have your plan ready and believe in your plan. What you could also do is go to TradingView, uh, turn back time two years, three years, and, and play the market as it is three years ago and see what happens so that, that you can also familiarize yourself with your mindset about yeah indeed uh, the, the bitcoin goes up and the crypto goes up but then it also comes down again with 80 percent and i'm sure after the next bull run after 12 to 24 months um it will come back again with with uh, with, with 70 80 percent i'm sure about it because that's the that's the yeah the 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 way how crypto behaves at the moment and you know and that is the the most yeah difficult part of of being investing in investing in in such a volatile market and i totally understand it and also i'm also a human being for me it's also not always so so easy although i'm preaching what you should do 
Exactly. Thank you so much, Andrew. We got 229 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. Thank you for joining us on this Monday. We're about to show you a very brief video of Brad Garlinghouse summarizing exactly what we're going to talk about for the rest of the episode. So I'm going to let this quick clip play, get some comments from the group. Here we go. You know, I think it's very clear that uh, the SEC, instead of doing the hard work to define a new set of clear rules, a new, new set of regulations, both from the SEC and really the U.S. government in general, they've ins instead decided, hey, we're going to do enforcement through, we're doing regulation through enforcement. Boom. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about for the remainder of this episode, as the SEC is claiming that XLM is an unregistered security under the facts that exist today. But Johnny Crypto, before we dive into that, let's actually talk a little Ripple XRP news because we have Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse denying the claims that he funded a law firm to target its competitors. This was a really interesting development that happened over the weekend. We're going to get into some of the details before we dive into our XLM news. So Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said that he has refuted all allegations by crypto whistleblower Crypto Leaks that he funded a law firm run by Kyle Roach to target competing firms in the crypto sphere. This is very interesting. So the allegations here, just to briefly summarize, my highlights aren't showing up on this article. What happened here was they're claiming that Brad Garlinghouse, as well as the overlying company for the Avalanche Network, went out and hired law firms to sue their competitors and point out some of the things that they were doing incorrectly in the market today. That would hinder some of the development that was happening on those other projects so that Ripple and Avalanche could grow as profitable as possible. Gonzo, while I pull up the highlights here, what are some of the thoughts behind this article? Yeah, you know, it, it's hard to tell. Like, it, you know, is it FUD? I mean, is he capable of doing something like that? Do these companies do that? I, I think they do, right? We don't have any evidence that they did. But are there companies that that go out and do that and try to destroy their competitors? You know, absolutely, right? Um, you, you, know, you know, when we talk about like the SEC lawsuit, I was thinking about this this weekend, right? Um, and I think I said this last week too, is like, XRP is about to get clarity, right? We always talk about regulation and clarity. And to me, it's starting to lean in. What I'm leaning into is the whole setup was the lawsuit was on purpose, right? It was because it's the fastest way to get regulation, right? Without waiting for Congress and Senate and all that rigmarole to happen because they take forever. The quickest way to give them clarity was for them to sue them, right? It just seems that to me. And now we're trying to see more of this, right? We're seeing more of like now XLMs coming up and stuff like that. So uh, we'll see how it, how it goes. You know, we'll have to pay attention to see what else comes out of it because the AVAX founder came out and denied it. Of course, Brad Callinghouse came out and denied it. So, but we, we won't know until we actually have evidence. Johnny, before we dive into the details of this thing, is this something that would make sense? Just from a logical standpoint, do you think it's worth it for some of these other crypto projects to hire a firm to attack the other crypto projects doing the same thing they are? Well, first of all, nobody's going to come out and admit it. Nobody ever does. Yeah, I'm guilty. I did it. It's not going to happen, right? They're all going to deny it. So just ignore that part of the story. Um, yeah, I totally think. I mean, you <laughs> watch Jim Cramer's video from 1998 or 2001 when he was running, managing a hedge fund and the kind of stuff they do. This is no different. You got companies competing for a shit ton of money, a big pool of money that's coming in the future. It wouldn't surprise me somewhere down the road to find out if they played a little. Somebody actually said it in the in the chat. If they played a little dirty, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. So, you know, I hope they didn't because I like Brad and I like Ripple and I like XRP. But it will not surprise me to find out that there's a little, a little background dirty stuff happening in the background. Let's dive into the details of this thing, Johnny, because both AVAX Labs and Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse claim out and refuted these claims. Kyle Roach, who is the lawyer that is claiming that Ripple and Ava Labs came and approached him, he stated that a lawsuit filed against competing firms to draw attention away from financial regulators. Ripple Chief Brad Garlinghouse of Lightning refused to... Oops, sorry, this is a misstep here. Ava Labs founder described them as ridiculous conspiracy theories as a response to these allegations. Not only are they denying them, they're calling them deep fakes. They're even claiming that AI may have been used to fake some of these videos. So this is getting really deep. Andrew Cashflow, why don't you close us out on this segment? What do you think about Rat Brad Garlinghouse and AVAX Labs denying all of these claims? Yeah, just, just what Johnny said. You know, is it fake? Is it fake news? Isn't it? However, it doesn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if it if it, if it really happens. But you know, and and no, nobody nobody will admit it that that it will happen. Um, 
it, it looks like this is more uh, a, a, a sort of American way of, 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 of doing this, because in, in Europe you see this much less, this kind of stuff. But yeah, uh, US is uh, managed by, uh, by lawyers and uh, yeah, they, they also need to do their stuff. Maybe they're also bored and uh, try, try to do some stuff. You know, I really can't say if, the, if it is fake news or really. It just they they need to 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 handle it because it happens and th that's what it is. You know what, Abs? I think what what it comes down to is does it change your investment thesis? For me, no, it doesn't. Whether it's true or not, am I going to sell all my XRP? Absolutely not, right? And so when, you know, just be careful of that. Everyone has to make a decision for themselves. Everyone has to have their own investment thesis and what you're going to invest in, decentralized, centralized, whatever that is, right? Have your thing, right? But for me, it. It, it just comes down to, does it change my investment thesis into XRP? No, it doesn't. So whether it's true or it's not true, it doesn't really affect me because I'm going to continue to dollar cost average into XRP and I'm going to do what I'm going to do as an investor. Yeah, I think the only risk there, though, Gonzo, is while it might not affect you, it could affect the, the large institutional buyers that someday may want to buy into this if there's funny shenanigans going on, right? So that's that's the only risk, the, the bigger risk that I see. But in terms of, you know, people's own decision making, you're right. Everybody's got to make their own decision. But if it's true. It hasn't affected Ethereum at all, right? We know all the shenanigans that happened with story. Ethereum and it story. hasn't changed them. No, uh, you know we, what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Like once they're the chosen one, man, they're the chosen one. But yeah, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. I mean, apparently Ripple got just the opposite effect. It's affected them dramatically. You can't even buy them on an exchange practically in the U.S. So we'll have to see. I mean, XRP, but we'll have to see long term what happens. Great, guys. And we're going to dive into an article talking about the global crypto adoption. And then we're going to get into our SEC news. Global adoption, we are still at drops in a bucket when you talk about how small this market is. As crypto adoption has just exceeded 320 million users worldwide. Let's get into the details. Singapore-based AAA says the firm gathered data from more than a dozen reports and surveys to obtain the most encompassing and accurate set of statistics for their study. Global ownership rates stood at 4.2% as of this year, translating to more than 320 million digital asset users worldwide. Johnny Crypto, you always go on to say that 5% of people are in crypto. That is insanely accurate. 4.2% of the global population is invested in cryptocurrency today. And the United States is actually leading the market with 46 million users, followed by India and Pakistan, who both have 27 and 26 million users respectively. Asia is also ahead of the curve when it comes to global adoption with over 130 million crypto users. Africa is in second place with 53 million and North America is in third place with 51 million users. But Johnny Crypto, here's where I really want to get your comments. The growth of crypto users since 2014 appears to be following the trajectory of internet adoption during the 1990s. Bitcoin grew a staggering 540% from 2012 to 2021. And it appears that we're going to keep going over this next decade. How do you feel about this adoption chart? And what do you think about only 320 million people using crypto? This is why I sleep. This is the second reason why I sleep great at night. See, and everybody else here should as well, because we know at the end of the day that we're into something. I mean, we just say it over and over again. I probably sound like a broken record to our warrior maniacs. But we're like in 1997 all over again, right? And we're just going to we're gonna have that same growth. And for those of us who lived in 1997 and made mistakes like I did, the good news is you now have an opportunity to maybe uh, wrong fix those mistakes, right? Kind of correct them. And so for me, Abs, that's why I'm not – that's why, like, I know we're going to go through a shitty next three months. It's going to be brutal. And it's been brutal for the past year, to be honest with you, right? But I'm not worried about it because of that chart. Because we know what's coming. We, you just have to be patient. Because if I was patient on Amazon, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. I'd be on a yacht somewhere. I'd be sitting on Amazon at $3,000 a share and instead of selling at twenty seven. Don't make that mistake. This is awesome. And like I've been saying all along, 5%. And I was wrong. It's only 4.2. But you know what I mean. Almost 5% of the globe is in this, guys. Five. Typically... About 55% of the world invests in in stocks or crypto, or, or I should say in stocks. So there's about another 50% of people that are going to come into this market over the next five to 10 years. Jesus Christ. I don't know how much more excited you could get than that, but this is just exciting news to me. Johnny Crypto, and that's Amazon, $3,000 a share, not including reverse splits. So it'd actually be much higher than that. 
But there's a couple of things I want to read. Thanks for ruining my day. <laughs> there's a couple of things I want to read for our listeners here. As Bitcoin grew a staggering 540% from 2012 to 2021, Bitcoin reached an annual growth rate of about 60% in 2021, and the cryptocurrency market is predicted to grow an annual rate of 56% from 2019 to 2025. Another example of how everybody in our community is going to be massively profitable over this next half decade. Gonzo, I want to get some thoughts from you, and then we'll kick it to Andrew Cashflow. Yeah, you know, I actually think that, so we know we're following the same adoption curve as the internet, but I think it's going to happen faster. And the reason why is back then when we were adopting the internet, the rails or the infrastructure wasn't there. So I feel like it took a certain amount of time. Now, when we're talking about cryptocurrency, which is like the internet money, those rails are already in place. And so I think it's going to happen faster. That's just my opinion, but I do think it's going to happen faster, the adoption, because those rails are already in place. Um, and it's just building up on top of those rails. Yes. Andrew Castle, any closing thoughts here? Yes, absolutely. If you see how many percent did Bitcoin rise in the, the last 10 years? 530,000 percent? 540,000 yeah. percent. And, and then a lot of people, they say, yeah, I should have invested uh, 10 years ago. Did you I have an idea how difficult it was to invest those days. There yeah. were no wallets. There were there was no YouTube. There was no videos to instruct you. There was nothing. It was all, yeah, all, 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 all uh, fake, fake stuff. And 999 people out of 1,000 would have sold if they maybe doubled their money or tripled their money. And I'm sure almost nobody would have held their, their portfolio the whole way till now I, I can't believe it so however that doesn't mean um bitcoin and crypto is low at the moment follow as gonzo says follow your follow your strategies do you do a dollar cost averaging strategy it's fine follow your strategy do you do a just a leveled strategy and say okay i invest with minus 20 minus 30 minus 40 do that strategy but stick to the strategy and cut yourself loose from time yeah, keep set it in your head. Before I make money, it will take at least 12 to 24 months. And you, do, you, you don't get rich quick. So, and if you put yourself and, and, and convince yourself about the 24 months, everything what is earlier, it's just, yeah, it's just be happy. It's and just bonus. The time, just stay investing and only invest money that you can uh, afford yeah, to, to, to keep locked up. I would not say to to lose, but to keep locked up. And yeah, that, yes, that, it's like we are, we have our long term bucket and we have our trading bucket. Andrew Cashflow, we got two hundred and forty two live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button. We're going to dive into the biggest news of today as Grayscale discloses the SEC's queries, stating that crypto such as XLM, Zcash, and Zen may be securities. XLM may currently be a security based on the facts that exist today. Let's dive into this and figure out exactly how the SEC is trying to screw American investors. So Grayscale Investments has been fielding questions from the United States Securities and Exchange Committee over the firm's securities law analysis of tokens in some of the less popular crypto trusts. So the disclosure appears in filings for trusts containing native tokens of Stellar, Zcash, and Horizon blockchains. In the filing, Grayscale said it was responding to the SEC staff of Division of Corporate Finance, as well as Enforcement, the investigations wing that recently doubled down on policing cryptocurrency. We are going to see more and more of these lawsuits come forward. And anybody who's new to this space should know that 99% of cryptos, that has been the narrative. 99% of cryptos are going away. And in order for that to happen, the SEC is going to have to crack down on these investigations. We are not advocates of what the SEC is doing, but we understand that this is part of the game. And like we always say, know the game so you can't get played. On June 18th, Grayscale actually filed something with the SEC that stated the SEC staff has not provided any guidance as to the security status of Zen, Zcash, and XLM. That line does not appear in the August 16th filings, indicating that the SEC may have given them some indications whether these three currencies are securities. In addition to the August 16th filing, Grayscale has received a memorandum regarding the status of Zen, Zcash, and XLM under the federal securities laws from its external securities lawyers. This is really interesting. We're going to figure out how this whole thing plays out right in front of our eyes. 
Is XRP a security? Is XLM a security? In my opinion, XRP is not a security and XLM may be a security. We can actually debate this right now. Let's start off with Johnny Crypto. Johnny, number one, do you trust the SEC? What is the narrative here? Why are they going after these three specific currencies? And number two, what do you think about the SEC claiming that this market is in the process of being regulated and that's going to happen through enforcement? Oh, first of all, I absolutely love the SEC. I think it's the most trustworthy and honest and integrity, highest level office agency we have. So let's just put that on the record there. Um, but given that, um, I think... <laughs> Johnny Crypto has just been added to the RSW index. <laughs> no, no, no. They're on the RSW. I don't have to say it because everybody in this chat knows where I stand and where they are on the RSX, RSW index. So I... Uh, Anyway, uh, in terms of the this, this is an interesting, interesting document, because when you look at some of these actual currencies, cryptocurrencies on this list, they they can solve cross border type payments. XLM certainly has the capability of doing that. Zcash, I've heard in the past, could be something that could also be used as uh, the one world currency. So it's very interesting that it seems like all of a sudden we're seeing a lot of targeting towards the things that we thought would be the solutions are XRP, XLM, Zcash, I've heard could be that too. So all of a sudden now these are being challenged and it makes you wonder, okay, is there, is, are they pushing these aside and coming after them because they have an alternative solution? So that's the first thing that goes to my mind because I'm always a contrarian. I'm always thinking what's the real agenda behind the news, right? Nobody wants to ask the tough question or wants to hear an answer contrary to what they're investing in. But the reality is you have to, you have to always think that you might not always have the right answer. So that's question number one, right? And as Jusko said, the question is more important than the answer. I don't know the answer, but that's question number one. And then when you look at, well, you know, I'll, I'll come back later. I want to turn it over so the other guys can comment, but that's the first red flag I see right off the bat is why are they coming after these solutions that the banks can be adopting? But yet instead, we're seeing them being targeted. Very, very interesting. Here's what's interesting to me is that Jed McCaleb has been left completely out of the XRP lawsuit, even though he's profited massively over this last decade. I believe he's made over $4 billion in his sales from XRP since 2013. But who knows what the heck is going to happen here with this XLM allegation? Because if they continue to crack down on this market and not allow retail investors to buy into projects with real utility, they're doing a disservice to investors. And that's the opposite of why the SEC was founded. But Gonzo, I want to kick it to you next. How do you feel about these allegations? And do you believe XR XLM is an unregistered security? So I, I don't I don't know enough about how when XLM was rolled out, how it was rolled out to know, like, you know, how we know that when Ethereum was rolled out, it was a security, right? Because I've done a lot of research on Ethereum. With XLM, I don't know, right? Um, but like what Johnny was saying, like, why are they doing this? Is it because they know that they could beat the case and then it gives them clarity? Or is it because like what Johnny's saying, is it because they're trying to crush these payment systems because they're going to shove CBDCs down our throat? Because we know that that's the ultimate goal, right? Is CBDCs. So are we starting to see the beginning of them starting to crush certain uh, cryptocurrencies and regulate them out of existence? Um, so that they could um, give us CBDCs, right? I don't think that XLM is just going to roll over, right? I, that the XRP cases look like it's becoming. We knew it was gonna, it was huge, but now as they start to sue these other, um, like sister cryptos, like XLM is always kind of tied with um, XRP. Um, it'll be even more pivotal for us or for XRP to win and then have certain definitions clarified because if XLM falls under that, then the SEC can't touch them, right? So whatever happens with that lawsuit, whether they win it outright or they settle, whatever the definitions that come out of it um, are going to be very, very key. And do, do these other cryptos fall into those definitions so they're also protected, right? Or are they left out to dry and now have to fight their own battle with the SEC? Uh, we're going to have to pay attention to that. Gonzo, I'd love to ask our listeners, do you guys, do our listeners believe that XLM is a security? And if so, would it affect your investment decision if the SEC came out and said that XLM is actually an unregistered security? Would that make you more or less bullish on the project? I want to kick it to Andrew Cashflow. Andrew, there's one quote I want to read for our listeners. Grayscale acknowledged that Z, Zencash, and XLM may currently be a security based on the facts that exist today. I wonder what facts they're referring to, but Andrew Cashflow, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. Yeah, uh, I also know, don't know what facts they are referring to, but however, I know 
what uh, that 99% of all cryptos will go bankrupt. So for 90%, 99% of all cryptos, it doesn't make sense for the SEC to sue them because that's way too much work and they will be out anyway. So what you can see here that at least what I think is that Zcash, uh, um, Horizon and, uh, and XLM yeah, will make a chance to survive because else it is not worthwhile for the, for the SEC to, to attack them. And that's how I look at it. So do I keep them? Do I keep my coins? Yes, of course, I keep them. And for me, it yeah, actually, it doesn't matter so much as long as regulation comes I don't matter if it is a currency or a, uh, a security, as long as there is utility, which is for Zcash, for XLM, then the, the, the utility will push the price because you need more of those coins and something which is less, your yeah, value goes up. So that's the way I, I, I looked at, at it. And I know I, I, I would rather see uh, regulation earlier than later. Because the sooner we have regulation, the better it is for the whole sphere, because then all the ins institutional investors can come in and we can see a pump. Uh, but I think that will take this other 12 to 24 months that I spoke earlier about. And Johnny so Crypto. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you, Andrew. Johnny Crypto, I want to yeah. ask you something. Why do you believe that they're only picking these three currencies? They're picking and choosers the winning. They're picking and choosing the winners, but they're also picking the losers. And it appears that they want these three to lose. Why do you think they're choosing specific blockchains to go after? Like I said, um, it's literally because again, I don't know. I have no idea. The, the first thought that comes to my mind is that they want to they want to hold them back or they want to stop these three because they have something else in the works. That's just my first thought. I could be wrong. The other side of the coin is it could be that they want to squeeze everybody out of these coins because they don't, you know, somebody said it in here, you know, that this is a retailer, this is a, a CBDC play and they don't want retailers in it. So that's really kind of, you know, maybe the main two things. But I do want to answer this question. I think this is really the most important. You know, somebody's asking here, how is it a security? Because you have no say in the company. Well, that's actually part of the problem. That's why. Um, so just so everybody understands for our audience out there, for something to be a security, it's about how the company went about launching the product and what they said when they launched it. So if they promised them a return, kind of like exactly what ETH did, right? Oh, we're going to put this out there and there's some growth that can come later. Boom, that's it. It's a security. The minute you just say something as simple as that, it's a security. So when you go ahead and you you put something out there with a with a promise that if you buy this thing, it could go up in value, you're kind of screwed. It's a security. So, yes, guys, that's what they all did. Every single one of these companies, cryptocurrencies, did that. They're all securities when they first launched. The real question is, what are they now today? How are they operating today? You don't see Ripple going out there and promising people returns on XRP anymore, right? That's why that's why they're not considered a security, uh, security today. I don't know what XLM is doing and why. Grayscale thinks there are maybe somewhere in the background there still is documentation or paperwork or communication that is suggesting that they're offering a return that's going to be much higher if you buy this thing. Then yes, that would still classify it as a security. So I hope that helps answer the question for our audience of the difference between a security and, and and it could be something as simple as where they look at it like it was a security or the way it rolled out was a security, but it's no longer a security. So they pay a fine. It could be the SEC just trying to rack up money, right? Because they lost a lot of money, especially when they lose the XRP. They've racked up a pretty big tax bill, right? Uh, or not tax bill, but um, it comes out through taxes to us, but they've racked, they've used up a lot of money. So it could be a, a, a power play with Gensler. It could be a money play where they're trying to collect fines, right? To, to increase their budget. Um, but I can tell you this, me personally, what I'm doing is if the price of XLM crashes, I'm making a calculated guess of putting a certain amount of my portfolio into it and I'm going to buy some more, right? It's and it's risk reward and it's calculated because it's an ISO token and what I believe. But again, it's not one of those things where you go all in, right? You have to have a certain amount of your portfolio in certain cryptos, right? And so I'm still going to do what I'm doing if I end up it's a loss. It's a loss, right? But I'm willing to take that risk. Thank you, Gonzo. And we're going to dive into some more news about the SEC. As Jeremy Hogan put out a tweet this week, and it said, $1 billion has been lost in crypto 
due to fraudulent currencies in 2021. 15 billion has been lost due to the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. Who's really out here protecting investors? The SEC has taken more than 15 times the amount that fraudsters have from this market. Andrew Castle, I want to kick it to you. What are some of your thoughts on the SEC taking more money from retail than hackers? I think I don't get, get the point here. So Sorry. the the overall point that he's trying to make is that the SEC was created to prevent people from losing money, prevent fraudulent projects. But when the SEC has sued oh. these individual projects, they've taken a massive hit in price action, which has caused retail $15 billion. What do you think about the SEC who's supposed to protect investors actually causing them 15 times more losses than the fraudsters? It is the play of the elites. I mean, the, the saying that you protect the people and, and on the other way, on the other end, they are doing something else. So uh, this, this is a whole, um, yeah, fake, yeah, fake, fake argument that they say that they protect the people because we we know enough about uh, that 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 the investors say, okay, go ahead with this lawsuit, lawsuit and solve it so that we have that we have our hands free to to continue. So yeah, cannot you say know, much about it. It it just it isn't true. You know, it, it's just about keeping the rich richer, right? Like that's, it's, they're not there to protect us. Like uh, Yusko has talked about this uh, on our show. They're there to funnel money back up to the top 1%. That's what their job is, right? Like as the Fed raises rates, as they crush demand, as they crush the economy and they crush assets, right? We're And Johnny was talking about this. A lot of people won't be able to invest, right? Because they're paying their bills, food, car, Right house all that stuff it goes up and so the only people that are able to invest when these assets are down are people that already have money that are already wealthy this is the game that they play right and so that's why you have to do whatever you can do right to to get on a budget or to work an extra job whatever that is to put money aside so that you can jump in on this because that's how they play the game right right as the feds raise race and they crush the economy the only people that will be able to buy these assets are people that already have money or that have budgeted for it, right? And so that's all it is to me. That's all it shows me is that they're not there to protect us. They're there to funnel money to the rich. Thank you, Gonzo. And we got 264 live listeners out there. Show us some love. Smash that like button on this beautiful Monday. We're going to continue bringing you the most relevant and impactful crypto-related topics. And that's exactly what we have lined up for you here. We have many of our listeners who are investors in Quant, also known as Quant Network. Well, their founder, Gilbert Verdinand, took to Twitter to describe the utility of central bank digital currencies. We're going to let this short clip play and then get some comments from the group. Here we go. We've been trying to tackle... But having central bank digital currencies will really allow us to tackle fraud once and for all. And, and having these controls built in from a policy requirement built into the technology, we can really eliminate the, the risk that consumers and businesses face. So what he's talking about there is how CBDCs give them greater control over the entire financial industry, not only showing them what people are buying and selling, but actually giving them the ability to restrict and access payments. Gonzo, we know that Quant is going to be one of these currencies that takes over the front when it comes to banking. What are some of your thoughts on this article? And we always talk about how CBDCs are coming. This may be a way to profit. Um, well, first of all, I love Quant. Right? We talk about Quant a lot. It's, it connects blockchains, and, and so we're invested in it. But as far as what they're talking about with CBDCs, it's just that, that the same narrative, right? That we're going to protect you, right? That, oh, it's fraud. You should be scared. But don't worry. We have something that's going to protect you. It's the whole thing like the Patriot Act all over again, right? They, they shoved terrorism and that whole fear down our throats after 9-11. And then we gave up hella rights through the Patriot Act, right? So it's more of that, right? They're going to say, oh, there's so much fraud. You guys can get ripped off. But if you take a CBDC then you'll be fine. We're going to protect you, right? But it's all about control. They even say it there. It's a better for, way for them to control us and to control the money. Thank you, Gonzo. And I actually want to let this short clip play one more time for our listeners. It's only about 20 seconds. We're going to let it play. Here we go. Blasting issue as, as an industry we've been trying to tackle. But having central bank digital currencies will really allow us to tackle fraud once and for all. And, and having these controls built in from a policy requirement built into the technology, we can really eliminate the, the risk that consumers and businesses face. We can really eliminate fraud and we can also really eliminate anyone who has a differentiating opinion than me. Johnny Crypto, I want to kick it to you and then we'll go to Andrew Castle. How do you feel about this development here? I just got a new guy to add to the rat snake weasel list. There we go. Put that ban on there. 
because he is lying through his teeth. There's no question about it. he's trying to spin that son of a bitch and not tell the truth. But we all know the reality of what the 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 uh, ultimate effect will be when uh, CBDCs come out. He is absolutely right. It will do exactly those things he said, but not for the betterment of society like he's trying to say it is, but more for uh, better control for them. And that's unfortunately uh, a sad day. So that's why we got to invest in these rails. We got to make sure we got to hope we're in the right ones. We got to hope that the ones that we're investing in are the ones that are out there and that they're not doing something in the background where we can't get a piece of. So that's the part we just have to stay alert of, uh, attentive of, and always be diligent and always keep. And that's what we do here, right? We're always researching this stuff. That's why you guys are here every day is we're trying to keep our ears open to this as we hear something different. We're going to let you guys know right away, and we're also going to jump into it. So, um, And if you guys hear anything, send it to us, too. Put it in the chat. It goes both ways, folks. 100%. And, Andrew Castle, I want to kick it to you next because Gilbert Ferdinand worked at the Federal Reserve. He understands everything there is to know about money, and he also knows that this whole shift is taking place right now. Their system is going to go live in 2023, and it's actually going to be using Quant's network to facilitate cross-border payments from Latin America all the way into Europe. What are you anticipating, my friend? Now, first of all, I want to say from a, I, I'm an engineer from origin. And from an origin point of view, I think this is fantastic technology. You know, you can do so much things, but, you know, from one side, the, the government is, is, yeah, is creating their CDBCs. But on the other hand, the people are creating their, yeah, their, 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 their cryptocurrencies. So actually what we see is a modern war kind of thing. Who is the fastest? Who is the smartest? And what I think that, and what I hope is that with all the people currently willing to work in in in, in crypto, that, that it will be pretty hard also for governmental organizations or or other companies to keep up employing all those positions and engineering positions to build all this stuff. So because I think the the crypto world will will just go faster than you can ever imagine and and i hope that cdbc will not will not be able to keep up with that pace in the end so it, it will be really interesting what what will, will happening in the in the future and of course this guy is guy is right we have more control that's what he said yeah about everything yeah the good stuff and also the bad stuff so um yeah for me it's also I always try to look at the positive sides. It's it's fascinating time what we are living in, and I think we are blessed to be in this this area, and 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 to yeah to experience it. Like I always say, it's the greatest time to get wealthy, and it's the hardest time to stay sane. But we got a community here to talk about these amazing conversations, and we're going to dive into our last story for today. As Mt. Gox creditors have dismissed the rumors of a massive Bitcoin dump coming this weekend. We covered, a show, we covered a story on the show last week talking about how Mt. Gox was set to release 140,000 Bitcoins into the market this weekend. That did not take place, and we're going to break down exactly why it didn't take place. As a creditor, Eric Wall introduced himself as the Mt. Gox creditor and confirmed that there would not be 137,000 Bitcoin dumped onto the market this weekend. He said the exchange has not yet completed the infrastructure needed to commence the repayment they on it. So for anybody who doesn't know what happened back in 2013, this exchange lost 850,000 Bitcoin. They've been throughout the past 10 years in the process of paying that back to the retail investors who lost those funds. Gonzo, I want to kick it to you. Everybody was so nervous about this happening in the market and all this liquidity coming in. How do you feel that we know for a fact 140,000 Bitcoin are not getting dumped on the market? Uh, I mean, we don't, but I just feel like just like like the Tether news, like th we've had the Mt. Gox FUD. Like since I've been in the space, there's always some story about Mt. Gox and what's going to happen. And, and the only thing that I could go on is people that actually have a claim, right? And that are going to get some Bitcoin that I've heard them speak on it. And from what I hear, the process isn't as easy as they make it seem. It's not like they're going to all of a sudden just send it to your wallet and you have it. There's a whole claim process. You have to have passwords or you have to recreate passwords if you don't have them. So um, I hear that it's a, it's a, it's a hard process. And so either people will not do it at all because it'll be too complicated for them or um, it's going to cause a staggering effect, right? 
but but who knows? At this point, I just feel like it's a lot of fun. We keep hearing this thing about Matt Cox, and it's been going on since last year, and nothing has happened yet. Um, but like I said, from the people that have claims that can get Bitcoin back, they have expressed that it's a very complicated, um, it's not as easy as you think, and that because of that, it's not going to have the effect that we think it's going to have. Yeah. Thanks, Gonzo. And there's one more quote I want to read that says, the accreditor also believes that the payments should occur in various installments, dismissing the fear that Bitcoin will all be sold at once, dumping on the crypto sphere. That's exactly what we talked about. Why would they release 140,000 in one weekend? Of course, that would have terrible implications on the market. But Johnny Crypto, I saw you had a comment. The floor is yours. Yeah. So, you know, when you think about this, here's how I'm thinking about it. I look at it as, okay, that's 137,000 that are going to hit the market. <clears throat> Some of it's going to be lost because people forgot forgot their passwords they may not be able to get it the process is, as gonzo uh, described is correct it's painful it's not easy so i would guess that of the hundred and thirty-seven thousand, you're probably going to only have maybe 60 to 70 that are going to percent that's going to end up in people's hands and then when they get it in their hands if it comes in a staggering effect then you know i think there will be a dump at some point maybe 10 or 20 percent of that will get dumped you know so maybe you're talking thirteen thousand coins maybe 25,000 points if I'm wrong and it's double, um, you know, so like who cares when you look at the volume of Bitcoin, I don't I think that'll get sucked up pretty quickly. I don't think this is going to have a huge impact on the market. I would imagine most of these people right now, if they're if they're paying attention, they're probably sitting there saying, wait a minute, I'm getting it at 20. I bought it at maybe a thousand. I'm getting it at 20. But the thing was at 60, which means it probably could go higher. So I would imagine a good chunk of them are going to probably sit and hold it thinking there's going to be better days. Um, however, with the economy being where we are, there will be some. So I would imagine 20, 30,000 coins hit at some point over the next year. I don't think it's going to be a big impact at all. Thanks, Johnny. And we're going to dive into our last story for today, which is a tweet from the digital asset investor. MasterCard is set to launch a cryptocurrency payment card supporting 14 cryptocurrencies, including the U.S. peg dollar stablecoin Tether. Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Cardano, Solana, XRP, and others after striking a deal with Binance. This is going to be humongous for mass adoption, but the fact that XRP was included on this list, regardless of the lawsuit, very bullish to me. We only got a couple minutes left here. Andrew Cashflow, how do you feel about this tweet? I, what I see is uh, additional rails to go up and, and, and into, into Bitcoin. So it, uh, it just adds to the to the adoption of, of cryptocurrencies. And I'm so happy that also the major companies not only listen to governments, but they also have their own plan. I mean, MasterCard is building this. this. So MasterCard is not saying, oh, maybe we should work with, together with the government and with the CDBC. No, they are actually doing it. So they see the added, added value. Will it directly be adopted by everyone and every MasterCard in the world? No, but the rails is there. So. It is an excellent development into the direction of yeah where we want to be. Thank you, Cash. Gotcha. Well, Johnny Crypto had a comment. Johnny, floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is huge. I mean, look at it. There's only two things that, that stand out to me right away. MasterCard and Tether. Now, MasterCard's, you know, probably one of the largest companies in the world, right? Uh, credit companies in the world for us here. And the fact that they are putting something that we keep talking about this is why another reason why i think tether isn't going to be the black swan event is they are, are partnering you know mastercard's not going to partner with they, don't forget these guys are all connected mastercard is big right the guys at the top know what the plan is there's no way they're going to partner with tether if tether's going under in my opinion so that's another validation that you tether's not going to be the black swan event. this is this is big news because as i said last time one of our episodes when a company like MasterCard comes out and says, hey, people, it's okay for you to use crypto, guess what? The people will say, oh, okay, thank you very much. I'll go use it now. And I think that's what's going to happen. And it's awesome to see XRP on that list. That, this is big. This is big news. Awesome. And we have a loyal listener out there, Aaron Brown, who's always talking about WadsPay. I will dive into WadsPay during my research tonight. So if you guys are looking to learn a little bit more about WadsPay, tune into the show tomorrow. Also, this Wednesday, we have a very special guest as BitBoy Crypto will be joining the show. We're going to close this thing out the same way we always do by saying thank you to each one of our guests. Thank you to Johnny Crypto. Thank you to Andrew Cashflow. And thank you to Gonzo, the Crypto Goliath. We got 220 followers. Smash that like button on the way out of here. And we'll see you guys in 23 hours. Like we always say, Warriors, rise. Get your shit together, baby. Thank you for joining us.
Let's go.